Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Uh, so today we are going to actually look at a little piece of hardware on Linux and uh, how to how to get everything working and set up right. Of course, as you know, I'm into practical Linux. I'm not into the the geeky you know backroom server type stuff. I am interested in this channel on how do you do your tasks on Linux because that's why I switched to Linux. I didn't switch over here to be you know, a, a little backroom nerd, I switched to Linux so I could get my tasks done because Windows was becoming untenable to use. And so I have a friend of mine who is a, a, a more artisty type person, and I am not an artisty type person, but he says, well, how do I get a graphics tablet to work on Linux? And so he uh, lent me the use of his graphics tablet. This is a Intuos tablet from Wacom, and I think the model number on this is XLAF776A, I think. Um, so if you open this box up here, uh, we have a tablet, and the tablet has some buttons up here at the top. Uh, this is the top. Um, this is, of course, your pad. Uh, this tablet's actually a pretty nice one because you actually have the ability to go wireless with it, in which case there's a slot here for a battery. There are uh, extra pen tips here. Uh, there's a slot to set your USB uh, hub right in there, and this is the spot where you actually plug your wireless card stuff into. So it's actually a, a very nice setup. I'm not sure what these run, um, uh, but you want to know how you can go ahead and use this in Linux. The other thing in the box, of course, um, we have our package here, which has you know Windows and Mac software, but no Linux software. And there is a USB cable, which I actually already have plugged into the computer here, just so I don't have to reach over here. And we have a pen. And so the pen, very much like the pen I have on the Surface, and it made me wonder if I could bring the pen from the Surface over here and, and use it. Now there's two buttons on the top of the pen. There's a top and a bottom button here. And uh, what we're going to do is look at how to use this. So, and I can't tell you how to use this for all of the other distros out there. Um, but uh, what you want to do is on your Ubuntu based distros, they should already have the drivers for these completely set up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over to my desktop view and uh, here is on my desktop. We're going to come up to our settings and as we go into our settings, you'll see a item here for graphics tablet. So if I plug this in, it says no tablet detected. That's because you know we are not plugged in. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just click back on that. I'm going to plug in the tablet right here to the USB port. So now it is plugged in. Take note of the direction of the top. And now if I click on my graphics tablet, um, then it will actually detect the type of tablet it is. Um, and basically we have a couple items. We have our pen here. So first is you want to look at what is your tracking mode. So you have relative and absolute. So the differences of these is when I bring the pen with the tip near, if I am relative, then what that means is when I bring my pen nearby, I'm not touching the tablet, I'm just bringing it nearby, you'll see it'll capture the mouse uh, cursor. The relative means that it doesn't matter where the pointer is, whenever I touch the pad, it's going to just start using the mouse at that point. Now if you use the absolute end, then if I touch the pad in the upper top, it will jump the mouse to the upper top of the screen. And it's actually quite a bit harder to use, especially since right now I have two monitors in place. It's totally confused. <laughs> and so I would actually have to come over here and hit the map to monitor. Um, I'm going to put it on the 23-inch monitor. So this now maps to a single monitor. So now if I go here. So this is why this mode, I mean, there's reasons to use it, but it would probably confuse a lot of a lot of users. So you probably want to keep that on relative because wherever the mouse pointer is, it works, it goes, and it doesn't matter where we are. We also now have top button and lower button on the pen and uh, the the pressure tip. So one of the things about these writing tablets that makes these useful is if you're using an application like Krita to do your drawing, which if you are doing drawing, you probably are going to want to look at Krita, then um, this is pressure sensitive. So the harder you press on the tablet, the harder your line happens to be. 
So we're just going to kind of keep that right around the middle for now. And then what I want to do is what does my top button on the pen, what does the bottom button on my pen do? So the top button on the pen is actually very nice for doing like a right mouse click, especially in Krita, a right mouse click pulls up your color wheel. So clicking my top pen button, I can actually call up my color wheel on Krita. And then the bottom one, you just kind of decide what you want to do. If I'm remembering correctly, um, I think my middle mouse button will allow me to drag my canvas around on Krita. And so I'm going to go ahead and set that uh, in, in that manner. Now the next thing is there are map buttons, and that is for the four buttons on the top of the pad. So what you need to do here is decide what type of buttons you want. We're going to not do those yet, and the reason is we're going to go into Krita and ask ourselves the types of things that we want. One of the things I have noticed, at least on this particular hardware configuration, I don't know if it's something on the tablet, something on the system, something on the computer or whatever else, the one button does not seem to map. It does show me there is a little light on the top of the tablet. It does give me the light feedback on the tablet, uh, but I haven't plugged this into multiple computers to see what exactly the, the issue is. But we're going to go ahead and uh, look at that in a bit. I'm going to actually pull up Crit Up and the reason we're going to use Krita, of course, is because this is this is uh, an application, like a, a drawing application, that is uh, something what you might use this type of graphics pad for. And so let's come up here, and we're just going to create a new document. Um, and sure, whatever. Let's just 1600, 900. Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and create the document, and then that should give us a new document creating. Okay. I gotta get rid of that thing. There we are. All right. All right. So what we're gonna do now is now that we have our pen up here, um, now you can see if I come over here and the uh, basically what I'm doing is I am drawing on the surface, so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. I'm not touching the pad yet. If I start touching the pad, I will actually start drawing. But you'll notice that the harder I touch the pad, the harder the line gets. Now, of course, that's probably a little bit too big. Um, you can kind of keep track of what your keyboard uh, shortcuts are. So I'm doing my keyboard shortcuts, dropping this down to a single line. So if you are adept at drawing, and this is kind of why you don't see me drawing. So this is nice. You can rest your hand on this. It's not going to cause any impact. Only touching the pen to it will cause drawing, and only touching the pen to it will... Um, will start to draw. So I can get near it to move the cursor, but if you know, if I want to draw something like, I don't know, I mean, I can't draw anything at all. And of course, as you get used to how these work, you can actually start to draw a little bit better. Um, there you go, switch to Linux. Um, you can, of course, get better and more used to this. If you are a more artistic person, that's what you can do. Now, and the thing about it, if you get used to these types of things and the way we map this button, if I just click on this button right here, uh, the top button, um, of course the thing needs to be near, I can't just click it over here, it needs to be near the tablet, uh, you'll see that the right click actually pulls up my color wheel. And this is why in Krita, this is why a tablet like this is something that people would often use, uh, use for Krita. So I can go ahead and uh, do that. And so then now that's my color. So now I can actually right click and change my colors on the fly, just like that without having to go near the mouse or the keyboard. And so that's kind of why, why you might use those. So the types of things like what type of, of buttons might you want? You might want the eraser button, which is hot keyed to the E. Uh, so if you push E, then you'll actually convert your pen tool to an eraser. But of course, we probably want to go up in size a little bit. We can of course come up here with our tablet and click on the erase and then maybe increase our tablet there and now this will allow us to erase. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and map one of the top buttons up here to um, to go ahead and erase. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mouse pad here. It's going to swap these around so you can kind of see a little bit better. All right, so what we're going to do is, I mean, I, I can literally just use this now as my mouse. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and click my buttons. Of course, it's not as not as used to it. So what we're going to do now is with my first button, and, and one of the downsides here with just using this default is I don't know which button is which. I think that this is the one that corresponds to this button here. 
So we're gonna send keystroke. I'm gonna push E. Oop, not there. I double click on the none. Now push E. All right. So now if I push um, this button, you'll see it pops up an E on the screen, and that's gonna allow me to convert to my to my eraser. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Um, I think this one is the button on the opposite side. So let me see what that one does. Nah, I gotta figure out which one's which. Which one's which? Okay. Okay, so now this lower button here will give me my E. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna map these buttons to my, um, to the ability to change it. So that is, I think, this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and test that. Well, that's still E. That's the top one. Okay, so that's this button here now is going to make, I think, the brush smaller, and this one will make it a little bit bigger when I change this to E. Okay, so now this guy here should be the, the smaller, um, uh, smaller um, brush size. This one should be the bigger brush size. This toggles the eraser. This is the button here, which corresponds to the last button, which I have not been able to successfully get mapping yet. So um, I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to map that to B, see if that actually works or not. B should be, um, so B should be the button that um, Paul calls up the brush, but it doesn't appear as that that seems to be working. Again, I don't know if that's having to do with my my hardware, the software in the system, this tablet. I can see there's a little indicator light right here. You probably will not be able to see it because of the lighting, but it does light up when I push it. It just doesn't seem to trigger the button. So we're just going to go ahead and leave that at that. So now with this new button in place, I can actually come over here and you'll see that uh, I can hold this button up here to make my brush smaller, this button here to make my brush larger. And so now I could actually make a larger brush as an eraser tool. And then I can make my brush smaller again, pushing this button over here will toggle me back to the ability to just draw again. So this button here will now toggle my erasing, and then here I can make it a little bit bigger just so I can go ahead and do that. So that is actually how you would just kind of set up your application with Krita. Of course, uh, you would want to ask yourself what are the best, uh, the best ways, like the best hotkeys, the best buttons to use, but this will allow you to be able to get in here and just start, start messing around, start doodling around. Um, oh, I gotta push my eraser button again. So. And then of course you just need to get um, get more into it. Of course the bottom button on the pen I set as the uh, as the middle button, which allows you to drag and drop your canvas. If you needed zoom, you could hotkey that button instead. Um, it's possible that okay yeah. So the middle button with control will zoom. So that way you can just kind of keep okay and that will rotate. All right. So you have a lot of options there. So again, push control, holding the bottom button, I can just kind of go up and down to zoom it in. So if I just want to do something more like this, um, de oh, decrease my size. So that's kind of how, how you can get the system to work. Again, I'll just go ahead and um, zoom this guy back out. So that is uh, just how to use this uh, little Wacom tablet and uh, and how to set it up, how to configure it. And then of course what you're going to want to do is go into your individual application uh, program, decide which, uh, which type of, of um, applications you want to use with it, and then just kind of set up your hot buttons accordingly. I'm going to hit no on that. Let me go ahead and load up Inkscape because this is another application tool that someone might use Inkscape for. Uh, doing things like this. Now this of course, let's see, I think this is mouse wheel. I don't think a middle mouse button. Let's see what a middle mouse button will do. Looks like that's, I can't tell what that what that's doing. Let's try that again. Okay, so that moves the canvas. Your middle mouse button moves the canvas. So I'm trying to see if I can, so yeah, if I, whoa. I don't know what I did there. 
Um, if you actually need to get in there and uh, um, if you need to get in there and zoom it, you have to figure out how to do that. But with this system over here, um, of course, I can come over here. And if you're, of course, using this system, then um, you'd want to figure out what your hotkeys are for this. So go ahead and select my pen tool. And then now I can actually come over here and I can just draw my first points. And then I can use the precision of this. This is actually a very nice application of this tablet is because you seem to have a little bit better control over how everything works here in Inkscape by by using uh, using the tablet. So if I were doing a lot of graphic design and stuff, I think that this type of tablet would be uh, would be uh, a very very nice system. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And let me go ahead and push my push my point editor. It is a, a little, I mean, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to for this, but here now we can use our pen to fine adjust things. So no matter which application you're you're using, uh, you can utilize one of these tablets to uh, to work on your on your designs pretty pretty effectively. Of course, this guy here would pull that out. Gives me all of the anchor bars for the the three relevant uh, three relevant positions. So that's good. That's just a little bit about how to use these uh, Wellcom tablets on uh, on some some of the software packages in in Linux. Of course, I believe any Ubuntu-based distro is going to be able to support these out of the box. I know I've seen the Wellcom tablet things uh, in Ubuntu. This, of course, is in the Linux Mint. Um, but regardless, that's kind of that's kind of what you uh, what you're looking to looking to do. We're going to close that out. Um, so thanks for watching this video. Uh, once again, if you do like um, what we're doing here on uh, Switch to Linux, you can support us. We do have a shop where you can pick up this mouse pad. Uh, that's at shop.switchtolinux.com. And uh, you can also come to switchtolinux.com forward slash support to learn about all of the current ways to help support us. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.